you at once, break control, you are cleared to land. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now making our final approach on the Games Master Resort. We wish you an enjoyable stay. whistle there. Welcome to Games Master and a special big hello to viewers in Luxembourg. I don't know quite why we're appearing on your televisions, but your individual channels are a joy to behold. Our vacationing video game fans are straining at the leash, so let's give them some relief with a medicinal trip to Games Master. Greetings and welcome to the Games Rig. I've decided to launch tonight's show with some gut-wrenching stomach journey action on Alien 3. Tonight's first young lamb for the slaughter has just two minutes to rescue all eight hostages and then exit first level of the game. Remember, <laughs> in space, no one can hear you scream. <laughs> Bursting his way through the abdominal walls of this challenge from West London, please welcome Shango Stapleton. <laughs> How you doing? Fine. Now, Shango, this is a very tough challenge we've set you. What's going to be the most difficult thing about it? Time. So how long have we set you? About two minutes. About two minutes. That's very, very tough indeed. Are you confident, though? Yeah, I'm very confident. All right. Well, you certainly sound it, Shango. If you'd like to sit yourself down in a games playing chair, we'll get ready to start. Staying firm and proud by my side once more is Neil West from Mega. Welcome, Neil. Thanks, Dominic. Now, Neil, the time is quite tight on this challenge, two and a half minutes. Can you help Shango along at all? Well, you're right, it is a tough challenge. Um, he's got four weapons at his disposal. Um, I think he should be better off sticking with the flamethrower, though he's going to have to be careful because ammo is limited. OK, let's hope he bears that in mind. Shango has to rescue all eight hostages and exit the level in two and a half minutes. Are you ready, Shango? Best of luck, mate. Off you go. So, off goes Shango here, playing yep. everybody's favourite Oh, takes a hit babe. straight away. That was bad. Not the best of stars here. Not at all. Oh, you beat your like alien pigeon. <laughs> Absolutely. No mucking around there. Pick up some nice ammo there. Re-batteries for the scanner. All very useful stuff. Doing well in the job ahead. Right, the scanner's in the top right-hand corner there. That's right. It shows when aliens are around. It's very useful. Little white blobs, like we saw there. OK, he's been gone for Absolutely. 20 seconds, and he's first got the hostage first hostage. Rescued. Underneath the time, you'll see um, 07. That means there are seven hostages left to be rescued. Okay. Obviously, when that gets down to naught, time to run to the exit, and the challenge is over. That's right. On the bottom left-hand corner, beside the picture of the machine gun, we can see the number of bullets he's got left. He's yeah, doing all right. right with us. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem, because the challenge is only over one level he doesn't really have to worry about conserving his ammunition all okay. he's worried about time because the limit is very tough indeed okay he's just got another hostage which means he's only got six left and he's been going for 49 seconds doing okay Took another one out from the air nice one oh let me little jump up to get that alien there okay although he hasn't been hit too much using uh, armor shango's energy the bottom right hand corner of the screen yeah that's looking, right looking firm and it's just now no. exactly while it's still green everything's okay <laughs> and if like like, you got a little uh, Cross first aid box yeah, there. Yeah, that would have boosted it up to maximum as it was. He didn't really need it. So he's Four hostages left to go. Peak power still. Being going for one minute, 14 seconds. Yeah, doing OK. It's still going to be tight. a bit for that platform. That'll take a little That's bit of time off the clock. OK, but here he goes now. I hope he knows where he's going, Neil. I think he's practised this enough. He should know his route by now. He's okay. doing OK. He's through no, this. He's through a little... phobia time here. That's right. He's got to negotiate his way through a few of these platforms. It gets quite tricky. He's got to go up, then across oh, to the right. Oh, there's a but that's going to miss him. That's right. all right. On his way to two another more hostages. Another there. Yeah. Oh, now he took that alien out before he got the other hostage. Very clear Very indeed. There's route. another one down the bottom right, here. Another two, got... in fact. And he's got 17 seconds left to get two 17 hostages seconds. there. 17 seconds. He's going to have to hurry. He he's is. Got two to the left. 15 seconds left two here. to the left. He might make this. That's now he's got to run. He's just got to sprint. Exit. Sprint right. Keep on running, Come on, Ripley. Shango. Come on, you can do it. He's the got four, just three, here. two. Oh, yes, he's, he's done it. it. Two seconds to spare. Fantastic. Two seconds to spare. Shango clocks the challenge, so he is a winner. Well done, Shango. Excellent stuff. Now, Shango. 
We said, we said at the beginning, Shango, it was a very, very tough time. You did it with two seconds to spare. Were you ever worried at all? Nah, not a bit. <clears throat> not a bit? No, it was just as easy as eating a piece of cake. <laughs> well, listen, congratulations, Shanga. You'll go home with the Golden Games Master Joystick! <laughs> So let's have another round of applause for a true champion, Shango Stapleton! <laughs> While yet another happy camper loops enthusiastically back to his cabin, three reviewers are desperate to thrust their opinions on the waiting world in this week's reviews. This week, erudite plotlines are replaced with no holds barred action as we look at shoot 'em ups. First up on the Game Boy, shoot lots of things in monochrome with this conversion of the spanking Amiga classic Xenon 2. Xenon 2 is a very famous game, and this Game Boy conversion is a pretty decent conversion. Bar one problem, it's very slow. The slower game speed actually makes it a lot easier than the Amiga version. But that said, you're still going to find yourself with very little hair at the end of the last level. I'd only recommend this to dedicated shoot 'em up fans who are starved of a good blast. I wouldn't bite myself. Next up on the Super NES, Axley. Shoot lots of things again, but this time it's in six levels of 3D Technicolor. Brilliant Mode 7 graphics, decent enough sound. But I can't help thinking that it's just a remake of an old, overused genre. Axley is a top shoot mode. But I think it's a bit tough, perhaps, for younger people. Oh, well, I enjoyed it, so why shouldn't you? The first level's pretty tough. Uh, it gets easier after that, which is a bit strange, but still. It's a great game. Shoot 'em up fans will absolutely love it. Finally, on the NES, Probotector 2. The year is now 2634, and lots of things are still getting shot. Now it scrolls sideways over eight very tough levels. It's quite playable. There's plenty to shoot. There's some decent extra weapons. It's good fun. If you die, you lose all the special weapons you've collected so far. So if you die in an area where there aren't any other special weapons, you're in trouble. <laughs> I've just been down to the cabins to check that this week's celebrity has been kept in the manner to which she is accustomed. So let's waste no further time and find out what her challenge is. Nothing beats a good grapple. And that's precisely what I've chosen for tonight's second <coughs> blast and double blast. I will get my revenge on those birds one of these days. Where was I? Oh, yes. <clears throat> the game I've chosen is called World Heroes. Another one of those three fights beat your opponents to a pulp extravaganzas. Don't forget to use each warrior's array of special moves, as it is with these that you inflict most damage on your opponent. May unseemly conduct abound. For this challenge, young Chris Brody will be taking on his sister, who's a bit of a gladiator in her own right. Please welcome Auriga Johnson. Welcome, Auriga. Now, Auriga, we had your partner in crime, John Fashionu, on the last series, and he was pathetic. Yes, really. I watched him, actually. I've been, I'm a keen fan of Games Master. Uh, are, are you going to keep the side up tonight? I doubt it. I doubt <laughs> it. No, no, I've, I've been completely useless, but I'm certainly going to give it a good try. Well, I find your honesty very refreshing anyway, Auriga. <laughs> now, let's move on to Chris. You must be the favourite tonight, Chris. OK. Yeah. Are you, are you going to give your sister a chance at all? No, not at all. No, not at no. all? <laughs> well, listen, um, what characters are you choosing? Chris, what are you going to do? I'm going to be Jay Khan because what? he's big and large and scary. And, and scary. And what about you, Aurica? I'm uh, Janet or something, I think. So, what, what will we see from her then? Well, she's got a fierce sword and she's uh, rather slim and slender, so she, I think she'll be able to jump over him and oh. hopefully. All right. <laughs> well, the best of luck to you both. Aurica, if you'd like to sit there on the left, okay. Chris on the right. We'll get ready to fight. 
Guiding me gently through the strenuous rigours of this challenge is Mega's very own Neil West. Welcome, Neil. Hi, Dominic. Now, Neil, two very different competitors here. What tips can you give them? Well, both of the characters we see here have special moves, much as you'd find in Street Fighter 2. Um, so I think both the contestants here just have to find out what they are and use them to full effect. And might I just say that even though I think Chris is the better games player, I still fancy Ulrika. I'm sure you do, Neil. <laughs> Right, it's a best of three bout situation. Whoever gets to two bouts first wins the challenge. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Then the best of luck and off you go. Right, here they go. Arika is Jan on the left hand side. We can see her energy bar, the little blue bar at the top. Chris yep. is Jay She's Khan. got first the yellow bar. Yeah, Jay Khan's gone down a little bit already. That was a good strike by Arika. That's right. When all the colours gone from the bar, it's a good night to that relative player. Yeah. Oh, no, that was an aura bar. That, that was a special move. She's got That's that right. sorted out very well indeed. Oh, oh, but that was a lovely sort of dive and then a then. But no. squatting kick from Khan. He <laughs> does have, oh. still has the advantage. No, that was a, a shoulder charge, which is actually called a, mon a, a monko mak you could do. Well Neil. done, Dominic. Which means two pints lag on a packet of crisps, please, Barman. That's where I come from. Okay. okay. We can see the energy bar here. Jen slightly below yep. Jay Carnes one there. Yep. Whenever you see a yellow smash, it's a hit. When it's a blue one, it's a block. That's right. Oh, oh there's one another of those special move there. She gets him back with a I swift sword. And Ulrika's down. Enough. Jay Khan, a lovely little punch to the stomach. Ulrika goes down. It's 1-0 to Chris. Okay, so we go on to bout number two. Jay right. Khan was squatting there at the end of it. Any tips for right. Ulrika here to get back into this? Well, she's just got to charge straight in there. Okay. Oh, I love oh, it. Oh, a lovely little, little move there. throw there from Ulrika. Right. That takes about uh, about fifth of the energy off, I think. I reckon. Um, while he was on the ground, she should have followed it in and be waiting for him for him to stand up again. Of course. You don't want to mess about being a lady in this game. Absolutely. Oh, a lovely little. Oh, oh a lovely oh, kick right in there. the gullies of Jay Khan there. <laughs> oh, dear, that up here is on the It's not Jay Khan's day at all, is it? It's oh, and a little, little flaming aura bird there. Ulrika. Brilliant play by Ulrika this time. Very good indeed. Very really good. A lovely oh, kick. A lovely She's kick lost only push. about 10% of her energy. She's doing very well indeed. If she can get a oh, special move in, it's it. done. Almost oh, a Rika perfect Johnson result there. Ties it at one all. Fantastic stuff. So with those fast punches, Ulrika pulls it level. So it's one all. If you'd like to see who wins this match between Chris Brody and his big sis, Ulrika Johnson, join us after the break. Welcome back. Things have never been tenser on Games Master. Gladiator's favourite, Ulrika Johnson, is stuck at one apiece with her younger brother, Chris. It could be anybody's fight. Now we've gone to the final bout. Are you ready? Yes. Then off you go. So here they go. Just a reminder, Ulrika is playing Jane, the babe on the left, and Chris is Jay Khan, the big fat bloke on the right. OK, now, Ulrika won the round earlier on because she stormed straight in. She didn't muck around, she used her special moves, she didn't take any prisoners. She's been a little bit tenacious. Oh, that was the order nice special there. move. Lovely, Very now, Jay nice Khan's down to nearly only half his energy left. OK, if she can pull another one off like that, she'll be doing OK. Oh, we managed to block her there. Oh, oh, lovely little diving one along nice the floor. Hit. They're trading blows here, but they really ought to get stuck in close range. Well, surely because the fat bloke can't get up to her. <laughs> That's probably oh, what it is. A series of dice. Oh, double headbutt. Oh, oh this is disgusting. She's got to get out of the corner. Chris She's got to jump. She's got to move. She's oh, out. Okay. She's out a quick special move now oh, to save her life, but nothing oh, else no, is going to do it. It's game over. She's open another headbutt. Jane bites the dust, which means Aurigla has lost. Chris is the winner. Victory to the fat bloke. <laughs> well done, Chris. Fine luck, Aurigla. Now, listen, at the start of Rika, I thought you were dead and buried, but you had a brilliant comeback there in the second bout. Yeah, so I think I managed to get in at least one aura bird, which was my special move. But I'm afraid in the third one, um, this big, gross, repulsive figure managed to take me over completely. That's true. It was one-way traffic towards the end. <laughs> Mainly the fault of this young rascal here. Chris, that was awful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what were you doing to your sister at the end there? Well, um, she got me in the second one, so... I had to get her back. Well, you've done more than get your sister back tonight, Chris, because you've won television's most glittering prize, the Golden Games Master Joystick! <laughs> So let's have another big hand for Chris Brody and our special guest, Ulrika Johnson.
While Ulrika gives Chris a sisterly kicking in revenge, we'll avert our eyes and turn to the consultation zone. Hello, Games Master. Welcome up to the helipad. How can I brighten up your little life? I'm having a bit of trouble on Super Mario World. I can't find the secret exit of the Valley of Bowser 2. Can you help me? This little problem can so easily flummox the foolhardy. You will need to fly Mario off the top of the screen and guide him left, as can be seen on your screens at home. Mario won't be in sight, but he'll soon reappear with Key and Keyhole close at hand. Thanks a lot, Games Master. Next, please. Hello, Games Master. On Sonic 2, is there any cheats for infinite lives? No, um, there isn't, I'm afraid. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. That's quite all right. And who's last for the evening? Hello, Games Master. On Zelda 3, how do I get to the Tower of Hera? Go to the top of Death Mountain, and you will find a warp into Dark World where you'll be changed into a pink rabbit. Walk left, stand in the middle of Spectacle Rock, and then use your mirror to get back to Light World. If you then walk northeast, you should reach the tower. Thank you very much. That's um, all I'm prepared to divulge for this week. My monocle's giving me a migraine. Heed my advice until we meet again. It's all commerce challenge time again. The big question is, will anybody beat the Nintendo champion, Thomas Patterson? Let's find out and welcome him back. Welcome back, Thomas. Now, Thomas, the big question is, will anybody ever beat you? Never know, but I don't think so. OK, some more potent words from you there. Well, listen, please. Someone beat this guy. I want him on the first chopper back home. So if there's anyone there who thinks they can beat him, please stick your hands up. OK, let's think. No, not you, not you, not you. Oh, there's a gentleman at the top there with a sort of trendy uh, centre parting on your hair. Yes, you. Would you like to come on down? Give him a round of applause. Welcome on board. OK, what's your name and from whence do you hail? Scott Naylor and I come from Rugeley. So, Scott, what's your challenge for Thomas tonight? I'd like to take him on at hang gliding on pilot wings, please. Right then. Thomas, what are you like in the air? I'm not bad. I'll have to see how it goes. I should win, but I might not. <laughs> Lovely words. There must be a bit of Shelley in you tonight. So, Scott, if you'd like to take your seat, we'll get ready to fly off. While our chopper scrubber Ian's hunting high and low for a copy of the game, I'm going to have a little chat with Jim Douglas from the Games Master magazine. Jim, any tips for how our competitors can hit that target? Yeah, certainly. Finesse really is the key here. Once you've caught the thermal and got up high enough, you've got to do a nice straight arc round and head for the landing zone. You've really got to be very careful not to make any sudden movements or it could end in tears. OK, I don't know if you're talking to them or me there, Jim. OK, our two competitors have to hit the thermal, rise to 500 feet, then land as near to the middle of the target as they can. Scott Naylor's going first. Scott, are you ready? Then grab some air. OK, here we see Scott in his hand glider. Off he goes. We can see the thermal. That's a little current of white blobs going up into the air. That's right. The target's in the top left-hand corner of the screen. You can see the little yellow box there. Now, how's his approach here, Jim? Looks fine so far. Really, he, it doesn't really matter how he comes into it. Once he's caught the thermal is where it really comes into play. OK, he's just coming into this thermal now. Any minute now, he should shoot up right up into the air. The next one. And there we go. here he goes, a That's little it. dip. 
Oh, and now. he's up now. He's he come really off the left yeah. as he's rising. I think he really should be going round to the right. That would give him a better approach. But maybe he's got some secrets up his side. Oh, dear. He's diving quite rapidly. Either he's making a complete disaster or he's very, very confident here. He might be a brilliant glider pilot and we just have never seen anything like this before. OK, he's banking to the left to come into the island again. We should be able to see the target soon. There it is in the top of the screen there. Now, There's a little thermal in front of him. He's got to be very careful to avoid that thermal. Otherwise, he'll be right out over the sea before he knows it. OK, his altitude is dropping. He's on 70, 60. He's got to watch his height a little bit here. He's, he's raised still a little actually bit. looking OK here. It's a bit erratic, but the, the oh, target's here well coming inside. In, he's got to watch the altitude. It's dropping now. now. This is going to be a good one, though. Right he's pulling up here. He's landed. Oh, Brilliant landing. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, well. awesome. And we get his total points. 90, 90 out of 100, virtually perfect. That's going to be very hard to beat. It's going to be nearly impossible for Thomas to beat. So, Scott, if you'd like to vacate your seat and make way for the frame of Thomas. So here goes Thomas. Now, Scott got 9th out of 100. Where could he pick up those extra 10 points then? The only thing that he can do is to get right into the centre of the landing zone. OK, this is what Thomas has got to look out for. He's dipping here. He wants to pull up a little bit, I think. That's all right. He's a bit more, bit better on course now. He's just going to ride this thermal current in a second. The altitude's dropping. He may be too low to catch this current. No, he's oh, got it. He's, he's got to make he's 500 right. feet, though. Is he got, he's yeah, made 500 he's feet. Now, he's banking to the right. Yeah, this, I think this will probably give him a, a better approach if he manages to pull it off correctly. It'll be nice and smooth. The key really is to get down to quite a low altitude quite quickly and then coast in gradually. OK, he's straightening up here to give him a better angle on the bank to the right. You can't see the island just now. You just see the deep blue sea. He should come into view. Yeah, he's levelled up nicely. That's right, good. here's the island now. You now, that's looking target. a little bit better. OK, here it is now. He's beginning his approach to the actual target now. now. He should get his nose up. He wants to pull, pull back a little bit to rise. That's oh, that's right. OK. He's this is looking OK. Be OK. This is looking OK. He wants to drop gently into this now. He needs to bank over to the he right and get his nose up. Pull up a little bit, up a little bit. He's going to pull up a little bit. He's losing height. He, he might, might just okay. make it, though. I don't yeah, no, I think he's dropping too sudden. He's missed oh. the target completely. Landed out of the area. Very bad. He's not going to do it. Let's see what his points were anyway. Thomas has scored a total of 60 out of 100. It's not good enough to beat tonight's winner, Scott Naylor. Yeah! OK, calm down now. Scott, you brought an army of fans with you. Was that the difference? I think so, yes. Yeah. Just luck. Oh, I don't know, 90 out of 100. That must have been quite good, though. You must be quite pleased with that. Yeah, I've been practising. You obviously have. Now, Thomas, beaten at last, what's your excuse? No, uh, not played it very much in that, know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> He's a slippy wee character, he is. OK, well, Scott, not only have you beaten the Nintendo champion, you also wing your way home with the Games Master Golden Joystick! <laughs> for Scott Naylor and Nintendo champion Thomas Patterson. <laughs> the dinner gong strikes and brings another show to a close. Before we pop off, we're going to have a little 3D test out just now in preparation for next week's challenge. So if you've got your 3D glasses, whip them onto the bridge of your nose now. This is just a little taster of what you can expect next week. Way 3D knives ahoy. OK, I'm off now for some sprat nibbles and a spicy Cajun dip. If you want to see more 3D, join us next week. Good night. Now here's how to get the 3D glasses. If you're a Games Master Club member, you'll be receiving your glasses through the post. The address and phone number for the club are on screen now. Make a note of it if you wish to join. Cost to the club phone line costs 36p a minute cheap rate and 48p at all other times. Ask permission before you make the call. You can also get the glasses with a special 3D edition of the Games Master magazine. On sale at News Agents now, price £1.75.